Hello everyone, welcome back to Medinair. In this video, let's discuss about tetanus. Now, tetanus is an infective condition which is characterized by reflex muscle spasm often associated with tonic-clonic convulsions. The main culprit behind this is Clostridium tetanae which is the causative agent for this tetanus. Actually, tetanus is totally different from the term tetany, which is caused by reduced calcium level or hypoparathyroidism per se, is the reason for tetany. But tetanus is totally different, which is caused by Clostridium tetany, is actually a bacterial infection. We can find Clostridium tetany widely distributed in the soil and also in the intestine of humans and animals. It has been recovered from wide variety of other sources including street and hospital dust, plaster of Paris, bandages, cat cuts, talc, wall plaster, clothings and so on. Now let's take a quick view on the Clostridium tetanase characteristics which, which says that it's a gram positive organism and a slender bacilli which has pores which is an infective agent and it causes infective part of that bacteria. The spore form uh, is actually spherical and it is present in the terminal area and it is bulging which gives a characteristic appearance of drumstick pattern. It is an obligate anaerobe which means it cannot live in presence of oxygen so it definitely needs an anaerobic environment to survive and grows well in Robertson cooked meat broth medium with turbidity and gas formation. It has 10 serological types based on its agglutination. The Clostridium tetanae organism produces toxins which are of two types. They are tetanolysin and tetanospasmin. The toxin tetanolysin has the word lysin there which means it is responsible for causing hemolysis and that's it. It doesn't have any role in causing tetanus, right? So, when it comes to the property, it is heat labile and oxygen labile, right? So, ne next uh, toxin we have here is tetanospasmin. Now, this is the one which is responsible for causing tetanus, right? So, it is oxygen stable and relatively heat labile and it causes tetanus. Now, let's discuss how actually tetanus happens. So, when a person is exposed to any injury, they develop wound, right? And if they are making that wound to come in direct contact with soil or to be precise, if they are making it come in contact with Clostridium tetanae organism contaminated surfaces, the spore form of that bacteria will enter in the, enter the wound. So, it germinates in anaerobic media and release bacteria which multiply and release toxins. These two toxins, the tetanospasmin and tetanolysin, are exotoxins. And as I previously mentioned, tetanolysin is a toxin which doesn't have any role to play in the tetanus pathogenesis, right? So we have tetanospasmin here, which can happen in two ways, like right? it can en enter the perineural sheath and through the perineural sheath, it can enter into the central nervous system, thereby blocking the colon esterase enzyme at the anterior horn cells, which causes hyperexcitability and reflex muscle spasm of the muscles, which causes the tonic clonic convulsions. Remember, once toxin gets fixed in this nerve tissue, it can no longer be neutralized. Even if you give antitoxin to those patients, it can never be neutralized, right? So, this is when the tetanospasmin reaches the central nervous system and if it is present in the circulation, it can cause toxemia, right? It is not bacteremia obviously because uh, bacteria is releasing toxin. So, it causes toxemia and blocks the neuromuscular junction by acting on the cholinesterase enzyme. So, thereby it aggravates the muscle spasm. So, when it reaches the central nervous system or if it is present in the circulation, both can cause or aggravate the muscle spasm. Now, once the organism has entered the body, patient present with the following symptoms that we are going to discuss now. Actually, the incubation period, that is the time between entry of the spore or entry of the organism into the body and the presenting first symptom is the incubation period, right? So, for that is 7 to 10 days. 
for Clostridium tetani. And now here patient is presenting with stiffness in the jaw, in the neck and in the back muscles. They also present with pain. They will feel anxiousness, they will have profuse sweating, headache, delirium, sleeplessness and they couldn't eat properly, they couldn't swallow and they couldn't breathe. Inability, difficulty in eating and difficulty in breathing. So the signs which helps us identify that this is tetany, this is a classic condition of tetany is trismus which means lockjaw. The obvious another name for trismus is lockjaw, right? So patient cannot open the mouth properly. So jaw appears as if they are locked. The next presenting sign is rhesus sardonicus which means it appears as like the literal meaning is smiling face. The second picture is the classical rhesus sardonicus picture that we could see in any place when, it, when we encounter the term. Okay, so rhesus sardonicus is patient appears as if they are smiling due to the spasm of facial muscle which is zygomaticus major. Whereas trismus is due to spasm of masseter and pterygoid muscles. We can also find that patient complaining about neck rigidity, spasm and rigidity of all the muscles, majority of the muscles and hyperreflexia. So if you perform any reflexes, uh, they will have a hyperreflex and tachycardia is also a presenting feature. Patient can also have tonic-clonic convulsions to severe convulsions. They can also have fractures, joint dislocations, tendon rupture, retention of urine because yeah, obviously due to spasm of urinary sphincter and constipation due to spasm of erectile muscles. The respiratory changes that the people have in tetanus is tachypnea. So they'll have increased respiratory rate, respiratory distress, Respiratory infections, aspiration, cyanosis, respiratory failure with altered PO2 and PCO2. Patient with tetanus can have different postures, right? So the most common uh, posture that we could hear whenever we uh, study about tetanus is orthostotonus position, which means, as you can see in the first picture, it is posterior muscles are acting more so that the patient will have a backward bending so you can this is a classic presentation of tetanus so they'll have backward bending they can also have orthotonus which means the patient will have a straight posture as a result of the front and back muscles acting equally patient can also have emprostotonus position which means forward bending as forward muscles are acting more it somewhat resembles kyphosis but it, you can imagine, right? It's a forward bending type of posture. Then we have a pleurostotonus, which is a lateral bending, which, because, which is because the obvious reason is the lateral muscles are acting more. So the patient has a lateral bend. Okay, so these are the four postures in tetanus. And, and now let's talk about the staging of tetanus. It, is, it has three stages, which is the patient will be mildly ill, seriously ill or dangerously ill. So in mildly ill patient will present with a rigidity, spasm, trismus and different postures that we have seen just now. And if the patient is seriously ill, they have spasm, rigidity and respiratory infections will be there. And if the patient is seriously ill, the respiratory infection will further like develop into cyanosis with respiratory failure and tonic clonic convulsions, severe convulsions and all those signs that we have seen like fractures, joint dislocations and so on. Till now, we have seen the uh, stages, right? So now let's talk about the types of tetanus, which is early tetanus. It is, uh, the early tetanus says that it has very short incubation period and poor prog prognosis. Whereas late tetanus is de disease develops after many months of injury. Whereas uh, latent tetanus is where the once injury has occurred and the wound is healed and it is forgotten, the patient will be forgetting that, okay, they had such kind of infection or they had such kind of injury. But the, because of the long incubation period, after many years under unfavorable environment or any re injured in the same area, the spores will release the bacteria and cause tetanus. So it, it carries better prognosis than the early tetanus. And that's a good thing here. 
this is based on the duration now let's talk about the how the disease progresses okay like the ascending tetanus and descending tetanus so symptoms and signs prog progress from below upwards is ascending tetanus and descending tetanus is the those which progress from above downwards right then we have cephalic tetanus which is the facial muscles are involved first which is because of third fourth sixth seventh cranial nerves can get involved at this cephalic tetanus phase when then we have localized tetanus and then we have bulbar tetanus here the muscles of deglutition and respiration are involved which is highly fatal we also have another type which is tetanus neonatrum the term itself is self explanatory right neonatrum which is tetanus occurring in neonates spreads through the umbilical cord and we have the final type which is urban tetanus due to repeated injection in iv drug abuses right so these are the types of tetanus here we have certain differential diagnosis which means we can get con we often tend to con get confused between this and these all conditions and the tetanus which is strychnine poisoning trismus due to other causes meningitis hydrophobia is fear of water M majorly it's because of rabies and we have certain other convulsive disorders which is the primary uh, problem is in the cns all right guys so this is the basic intro about the basic uh, idea about tetanus and the causative organism the pathogenesis clinical features and so on when it comes to the treatment it's quite um, similar and to all those bacterial infections but we have certain other uh, modalities of treatment which i think is necessary to get covered in a new topic i can cover it as a new video so i'll make a new video and i'll do tag it in the description box and I'll pop an i button so please do check that out as well so please do subscribe and click that notification bell button to get notified when i upload that video so i see you guys in my next video bye